What's up, guys? JT here. Acme Mowing. Acme Mowing and Lawn Care. AcmeMowing.com. Along with... Happy Saturday to you. Uh, today's Saturday, obviously. Today's maintenance day for us. <clears throat> we don't have any work scheduled today, so we're going to be working on some of the mowers. Uh, two of them are due for oil changes, and uh, we've been working on our old work truck. I don't know if you remember it. Uh, it's been a year or so since we've had this sucker in, in service. Uh, but we got her all running and fixed up now, and uh, I'm taking it out for a car wash. It's the first car wash it's had in probably a year and a half. <clears throat> So it'll look like a totally different truck when we're done with it. I should have gotten a before shot of it. It was pretty nasty. And I was uh, going through some questions last night, putting them in the uh, bucket. Uh, one of the questions that I've been thinking about a lot lately uh, is uh, when do you go from part-time to full-time or do you just start off uh, full-time in this business? Uh, and I'm gonna tell you, it depends, man. It depends on a lot of things, just like everything else in lawn care. It, it depends on uh, on your personal situation, and sometimes things in lawn care depend on your locality or you know your geography. Uh, down in Florida, I know those guys cut year round, so that is something that you can jump into straight away. Uh, you could, uh, but up where I live, uh, we have about five months or so. Uh, where we don't have much business and if we do have any business it's a hardscape it's a little more difficult in Oklahoma to go full-time right off the right off the rip than it is in other places just because of our uh, limited season you know I mean there's a lot of things in lawn care like that just kind of like uh, hey what's the best mower uh, what's the best mower? what's the best zero turn for me to buy well I'm gonna tell you that that all depends uh, the best zero turn depends on where you're at Sorry, it's getting kind of loud. We're going through the car wash. Uh, you know, a mower that works, say, in Pennsylvania or Ohio may not do as good down here. We have a different kind of grass down here. We've got a Bermuda, a hardy Bermuda. Uh, there's a lot of fescue type lawns up there in Ohio and Pennsylvania. So our lawns differ. Uh, a great deck up there may not be such a great deck down here. So it all depends. It's situational is what I'm trying to say. So I was in the military for uh, 21 years and I got out and I got a job of doing, doing some aviation stuff. And uh, that pays me very well because of the experience that I had in the military as an air traffic controller. Uh, it requires a special skill set. So for me to give up that job, to go into lawn care full time would be foolish. But let's just say that I had a different job. Let's say I was a, oh, I don't know, a bomb loader. There's not much call for that out in the civilian community. So uh, the decision to go full time into lawn care may be a little bit easier in that situation for me. You know, it's all situational, guys. It all depends on your personal situation. Uh, for me, I had that great job and I had all those years to save up uh, money. So I got a good start. I, you know, I was able to get my equipment and my trailer and a truck to pull it all with right off the bat. So I had an advantage, but even with all that stuff going on, I still only went part time. This is our third year and we're part time in our third year. Uh, we started off full time our first year and uh, that just didn't, it didn't work out at the time because there's just too many other things going on and JT needed health insurance and all this other kind of crap. And, uh, and I wasn't able to do it full time. Not that I wanted to anyway, because I had that great job. Uh, basically what I'm trying to say guys is, uh, you know, it's all, it, it's all situational. It's all up to your personal um, situation, like so many other things. Uh, so to take advice from somebody in the lawn care business on whether it's best to start off full time or part time, uh, I think is, uh, I don't think that's a great idea. I think this is one of those things where you need to make that determination uh, yourself. You, you have to know yourself before going into it. Uh, I will share with you uh, my thoughts on it though. If I were to, uh, if I were to uh, have another job that maybe not paying so good or maybe I hate going to or something along those lines uh, and I was seriously considering uh, lawn care, uh, 
to go full time, I'd probably start off part time. Why? Why? Uh, you may ask. Why would you start off part time? I'd start off part time because I have a job that I've got a, a for sure income coming in. I know that income, and I know what my budget is on that income, and I know I can live on that income. Uh, you start off part time, you can kind of get a feel uh, for for how many properties you're going to need to do, how hard it is in your area to pick up those properties. Uh, you know what I mean? You can't just expect to start off with a full schedule. It took uh, JT and I, well, about half a season uh, to get up to the position where we were working a full schedule uh, that first that first season. Uh, but even then, we were really lucky. Um, most most people don't have that kind of luck. Uh, we did the bandit signs. Um, we also did the EDDM cards for advertising. And I'm telling you, uh, the bandit signs did pretty good for us. The EDDM cards were our magic. Again, with the EDDM cards, it's situational, right? So this all depends on, on whether you're going to be able to start off right away or whether you should kind of ease into it. Uh, the second year we went part-time, I was able to do my job. Uh, well, uh, JT was able to get a full-time job that had health care benefits. And we kind of did the lawn care thing in the afternoon uh, on our second uh, year and our third year we did the same thing uh, this year we did the same thing kind of part-time uh, I'm always gonna be part-time uh, JT uh, was full-time the first year part-time the second year part-time this year and next year he's planning on going back to full-time so that means uh, in order to do that and we already know that we can do it uh, we could fill up our schedule with no problem whatsoever uh, we just need to advertise. We know those EDDM cards work in our area. We know that the EDDM cards that we designed are work uh, workable. People like them. People call us on them. Uh, we get a great return of investment on them. So we already have that knowledge. You guys that are asking, should I go full-time or should I start out part-time, probably haven't tried any of that stuff yet. Uh, being a part-time guy, you can experiment with what works best. And I think, uh, in my opinion, if I were to uh, to do it if I were to ease my way into full-time uh, That's probably what I would do is start off part-time see if I liked it even see if I enjoyed it uh, uh, See if I could hack it. There's a lot of people that can't hack it uh, You'd be surprised how hot it gets and uh, you know a lot of people don't make it all season That's why you see so many great mower deals halfway through the season People didn't realize how hot it got and they didn't realize how much effort it is so Try it part-time, I say. Uh, you know, pick up a couple of lawns and see if you like it, and then kind of start stepping it up from there. You're gonna get to the point, if you keep doing that, that you're gonna have to make a decision. It's not gonna be, it's not gonna be, uh, you know, a question of, do I want to? It's gonna be a question of, uh, well, it's not gonna be a question of, can I? It's gonna be a question of, do I want to? And only at that time is when I would make that decision say hey you know I've I've been doing this part-time and I've got enough yards that I know if I pick up one or two more that's gonna replace my current income or even better and I know I can pick up more well then by all means go full-time uh, I hate to say it but uh, you know there's no clear-cut answer on this one guys it depends on your situation Why isn't Lex here, JT? She doesn't feel good. Uh, JT missed yesterday because he didn't feel good, and Lex is missing today because she doesn't feel good. And they think it was something that they ate. Saw it. Anyway, uh, we're going to show you some footage of Lex from yesterday. We did some smalls yesterday, and we got some footage. Uh, and then today, JT and I are going to do this big one. You ready to go? Let's get it done. And do it.
That's good. So guys, I just want to leave the discussion with this uh, to keep in mind. If you're watching these guys like me on YouTube and, and you're taking their advice 100% and, and you know, you're taking what they have to say rather than what's going against your own gut instinct, I would say don't do that. Uh, you know, we, we all give our advice and our opinions on our personal situations, on how we've experienced things and what our backgrounds are and what our geographical location is or our financial situation is. We give our opinions based on, on all those things put together. So take it for what it's worth. Uh, you have to be the owner of your decision. You can't, you can't listen to somebody's opinion and then try it and then say, ah, I shouldn't have listened to that guy, right? You shouldn't listen to anybody. You should listen to yourself. Uh, go out onto YouTube, hear all the opinions, see what everybody has to say about your specific question. Should I start a lawn care business uh, full time or should I start off part time and work into full time? Uh, ask everybody that. I gave you my opinion on what I would do, uh, how my personal situation is and what I think I would do if I was in a different situation, but I don't know that for sure. And neither does anybody else that are that's given advice on the YouTube uh, channels out there. They don't know. Uh, they know what their personal situation is, maybe. Uh, and beyond that, though, uh, you know, take it for what it's worth. Uh, you know, that's their two cents. This is my two cents. Your opinion's the one that matters. You're the you're the one that's making that decision. You take all those ideas, and you come up with your own idea uh, and your own plan. Because if it if if you don't own the plan, if you don't own it, uh, it's easy to give it up. It's easy to blame it on somebody else for it not working. So people tend to be a little bit harder on themselves when it's their plan, right? They tend to work a little bit harder to make that happen because if it's your plan, well, who wants to be a failure, right? Who wants to who wants to not succeed with their own plan? It's easier uh, to pass it off if it's somebody else's plan saying that plan sucked. I shouldn't have listened to that guy. Listen to yourself. Uh, is what I'm trying to say. Trust yourself. Some of you guys are going to get out there and you're going to you're going to go barnstorming on it. You're going to go crazy. You're going to be success overnight. And some of you guys out there are going to have to work for it. Uh, it's going to take years to get where you want to be. Other guys, it's just never going to happen, guys. I mean, it's just not going to happen. Uh, you have to know that going in. But it's got to be your plan. If you want any chance of success, it must be your plan. That's all I got to say about that. See you in a couple of minutes at the Fridge Fang. Let's go, baby. Wilford Brimley, let's front and center, sir. Present yourself. What did I do with? Hold. We'll just wait out here until you figure out what you're doing. Oh, there it is. We're on standby, fellas and ladies. Maggie, no. Don't go swimming. Come on, let's go. We're going out. We're going into the shop. Let's go, baby. You have to sleep on the floor. You have to lay on the floor if you get in the pool. Hi, baby. Oh. Come on, baby. Man, it was a warm one. Oh, look at it. We almost got no flowers left. I know. It I think too it. Hot. I blame you. Yeah. Go, Welford, with your fancy new haircut, thinking you're something. Let's go, brother. Hurry up. I'm going to have to fast forward that part. Welford Brimley was like walking at like a quarter mile an hour. Yep, you got to fast forward. Hello, baby. What a good girl. And you're a good boy too, because you actually took your seat. There's no distractions tonight though, right? No other peoples. Hi, y'all. Mm -hmm. Hey, KH. 
Hey, baby. So today, uh, I answered one of the questions that was put in our bucket. So if we pull it out of the bucket mm -hmm. from Josh's, uh, we'll just say, hey, we already answered that in this video, right? All right. Uh, but I got that question. I put it in the bucket, and I've been doing a lot of thinking on it, right? Yeah. Because it is a great question. One of the best questions, I think, that uh, uh, that's the question I was asking, right? Yes. At what point do I do this? I love my job that I have now, my full-time job, but yeah. I also love lawn care. I really do enjoy it. I know you do, baby. So, we got nothing for the fridge of fame as far as I know. Uh, we might. The thing is, is I haven't been up to the post office in like three days. Mm -hmm. So I apologize if you sent something like four days ago and I'm, and we're not opening it tonight. Uh, pro I promise. I'm going to go up there tomorrow and I'll get it. And yeah. we'll do the Fridge of Fame thing on Wednesday for you if that's the case, right? Yes. So what would you think of the video tonight? I loved it. I think that there's a message here. Yeah. There's a message definitely, and the message that I was trying to send is, is people need to trust themselves more. Yeah. Uh, they need to stop going out and looking for that inspiration and find that inspiration within themselves because it's there, guys. You don't need anybody else. You don't need to send somebody your money to be inspired by them as far as a tape or anything like that goes. You don't need that. You need yourself. You need to know where you're going and what you want to achieve. That's all you need to know, and you can do it yourself. I promise yeah. you. I yes. promise. Right? Yes. Okay. So. We are. We're going to answer a couple questions tonight. Yes. Uh, JT and Lex are not here tonight. Right. Something came up, <laughs> as, the, as it does in 20-year-olds' lives. Yeah. But we got a lot more questions, and we appreciate your questions. Okay. And we, hold on, before we draw on out, right? Mm -hmm. So this is our jar right here. This is our question jar that we have. Uh, I've asked uh, them to name this jar. Uh -huh. So far, we've gotten, like, uh, the crimson, what is it? The crimson jar of knowledge or something. I don't know. It's something like that. But if you have an idea... Tell me what it is to name this thing because we want to put it up to a vote and whoever uh, gets the most votes. How about the dynamite bucket? It goes along with the Acme thing. The dynamite bucket might work. Like, you can put that up. <laughs> so, KH, okay, so the other answer has uh, some competition with you. Yeah. But if you, uh, you've got a better name, please submit it. Heck yes. Let's pull the first question. Okay. What's the question? It is from Mark Sizemore. How often do you service the mowers and sharpen the blades? Mm, that's a great question. Uh, we service the mowers as necessary. Uh, I know that my Xmark mowers uh, pretty much require every 100 hours, but I do it every 50. So that's my own personal thing is I do it every 50. So, so that was that. And what yes. was the other part of the question? And sharpen the blades. We sharpen yes. the blades as necessary. Yes. Uh, depending on, you can tell when you need to sharpen your blades. You know what I mean? Uh, when you get out there, you can tell whether you got a half a day or a day left in them. Uh, and that's when I sharpen my blades before I, when I notice that, the next time I get home, then I sharpen them. All right. Yes. Next question. Okay. Oh, you, do I get a pull? Yeah, it? you pull it. Okay. All right, here, you read it though. Okay. It is from <laughs> Mark Sizemore. <laughs> uh, wow, okay. Do you purchase brand name blades or do you purchase aftermarket products? Oh, oh, this is an easy one. Uh, I both. I purchase brand name blades and I purchase aftermarket products and the aftermarket blades that I purchase are normally the Oregon brand. Uh, I've had good luck with them. Uh, although I'll tell you the X mark, uh, you know, the X mark blades are nice. Uh, and I order them once in a while too, just because I support my dealer. Yes. Uh, and I think it's important to do so guys. If you want to keep your dealers, you have to support them, right? It's like everything else. They're a small American business. They, 
it's hard for them to compete with the big box companies. Right. So once in a while, you don't have to do it every time, just once in a while, at least support your, your little guy and, and buy those authentic blades. Mm -hmm. They're actually better in my opinion, yeah. uh, but that's just my opinion. Get yourself a good blade sharpener. Yes. Uh, buy yourself some X Mark blades and they'll last forever almost. Well, for a season at least. Yes. All right. So love each other. Make lots of money. And peace. Peace. We'll see you on Wednesday. Hey y'all, did y'all notice my green tie-dye shirt? Go buy one at our Acme shop. It's in the description below. See you later. Bye y'all.